Hi, here on the workbench today is a Thermomaster P2 Pro thermal camera sent in from Thermomaster. This imager has a thermal resolution of 256 by 192 and has a temperature range between minus 20 degrees Celsius to 600 degrees Celsius. The P2 Pro comes with a magnetically attachable macro lens, which should come in handy for close-up examination, and it's definitely going to be useful for inspecting circuit boards. If you don't need the macro lens, you can get the P2 version. Anyway, I will leave the product link in the video description below for those who are interested. Now, the Thermomaster P2 Pro looks awfully similar to the Infisense P2 that I had reviewed a few years ago. In fact, when I initially looked at their product page, I thought they might be similar, but I wasn't entirely sure. Upon receiving the device, it became very evident that they may just be the same thermal camera under different brand names. Now, these two are side by side, you can see they are virtually identical. And let me just show you a little bit more closer. I'm not sure how much closer I can get, but if you take a look, you can see that their thickness and all the dimensions look exactly the same. Now, the seam on the Thermal Master, which is on the left side, you can see it's a little bit more pronounced than what is on the Infisense, but that's about it. Now, I think that may just be the manufacturing process. It has nothing to do with the design here, but overall, these two are virtually identical here. One thing interesting is if you take a look at the supplied macro lens, you will see that it sticks onto the thermal camera, the P2 Pro, and that's no problem, as it's intended for. But if you take a look at the Infisense, it actually doesn't stick. So now I'm thinking this probably has a magnet here and also has a magnet on the other side of the thermal master. After all, the case is aluminum, so it wouldn't stick. So let me demonstrate here. So if I'm putting this on the reverse side, you can see that the camera lens does not stick. Of course, it doesn't stick on the Infisense either. So that's just something you need to pay attention to. So I'm assuming only the P2 Pro has this magnet inside the case so that you can actually magnetically attach the macro lens. And on the P2, you probably don't have this magnet. That's just my guess. Anyway, that should not be a surprise to anyone as the different branding for the same underlying product is a common practice among a lot of products made in China. In fact, I think both products are probably based on the Infiray P2 and P2 Pro as Infiray is a leading thermal imaging sensor manufacturer and they produce fairly high quality thermal imaging sensors. Now, coming through the specs, the Thermomaster P2 Pro does show some improvements over the Infisense I have here. Given these devices are two years apart, I'm not surprised there are some improvements. For instance, the temperature range for the Thermomaster P2 Pro is between minus 20 degrees Celsius to 600 degrees Celsius, compared to the minus 20 to 170 degrees Celsius temperature range on the Infisense P2. The noise equivalent temperature difference, or NETD, of the Thermomaster P2 Pro is also better than what is specified for the Infisense P2. For the P2 Pro, the NETD is 40 mK, whereas for the P2, it is 50 mK. So technically speaking, the thermal image captured on the Thermomaster P2 Pro is going to be even sharper than those captured with the P2. Now, you may not be able to tell the differences, as the P2 is already pretty good. We will have to do some comparison between these two. Both thermal cameras, when connected to a PC, shows up as USB cameras. For the device IDs, you can see that these two are actually very similar. The vendor IDs are both 0BDA, and the product IDs are only slightly different. The Thermal Master P2 Pro is 5840, whereas the Infisense P2 is 5830. So this kind of validated my assumption earlier that these two devices are probably closely related. Anyway, here I'm using the default camera app Cheese on my Linux box viewing the output from the Thermal Master P2 Pro. I'm not entirely sure how the camera encodes the data, but you can see here we have essentially two streams. One is grayscale, the other one is greenish. Now it seems the other stream had undergone some kind of high pass filtering, as you can see the edges here. If you compare the video captured with the Infisense P2, which I'm showing you here, you will see that the captured results are fairly similar, but the video captured from the Infisense P2 has some visible flickering, especially through that green color channel. And now I'm putting these two videos side by side, you can see that the quality on the Thermomaster P2 Pro is slightly better than what is captured by the Infisense. So definitely there are some differences in the underlying hardware. Here I tried to use another webcam tool. This one is the Webcamroid. And you can see that the application interpreted the stream better than what we had with Cheese. And by the way, right now I'm using the Thermal Master camera. Anyway, let's take a look at using the recommended Android software. The software is called Temp Master and it's written by Thermal Master. 
So let's plug it in. And by the way, you can see how tiny this device is in comparison to the phone here. So once it's loaded, you can see we have some options here. And let's actually click on the camera. So it goes right into the camera mode. It does take a few seconds to initialize. And once it's initialized, you can see the images in the back here. So let me actually readjust the camera angle so we can see it slightly better. And you can see right now we're in this thermal camera mode. Of course, there's not much going on in the background. We will probably put something to show you a little bit later. But it would be nice if it boots directly into this thermal camera mode as, for example, right now if I get out of here, Next time I come back in, you will see it actually does not remember to go to the camera mode directly. You have to select the camera yourself. That is not a problem. I just want to point that out. There is an actual step involved here. Actually, let me flip around the camera so you can at least see something here. Alright, so right now at least you can see something while I'm talking. You can see the thermal image quality is actually fairly decent. And that's me, and of course that's my camera. You can see the camera is heating up. And we have the light in the background there. There is a manual included with the camera, but it doesn't go into any depth, unfortunately. Luckily, the camera is fairly easy to use, and controls here are fairly intuitive. So you can actually get used to it pretty quickly. Now, one function it did take me a while to figure out is this X3. Here you can see that it's highlighted and it's enabled. If I disable that, you can see the image didn't quite change much. But if you look in the detail, that's why I zoomed in here, you will see that some of the details are becoming a little bit blurry and a little bit noisy. And if I enable it, let's try to see if you can see it. Yeah, it's very subtle. You probably can't really see it on the camera. But once it's enabled, you can see that the image becomes smoother and it seems that some of the noise went away. So I assume there is some kind of post-processing going on with this X3 enabled. And that adds additional filtering to the images captured. And like I said earlier, this application is fairly easy to use. You can select, for example, the temperature. You can measure the temperature along a straight line. And the only difference here is it does not display along the line. It's displaying on top here. So it does take some getting used to, but you can do it no problem. And let's do a rectangle here. And you can see similarly, you can see the temperature in that rectangle. Of course, we can do a circle. And by the way, any of these settings can be superimposed on top of one another. Of course, you can do them independently as well. So you can change the font color. I'm not going to try that. And let's come here. Now, this is where I actually really like it. You can see we have all these different color schemes. And you have this light preview. And that is actually very neat. For example, I change it to this one. I change it back. Now, I actually like the iron red as the default. This color scheme is my favorite. So we can come here to the camera. Of course, you can take still images. Let's try that. And now I took a picture of myself, you can see. Of course, I can record videos as well. Let's try that. And we're recording videos here. Let me wave at it. And let's stop. And you can see the video recorded here. So let's come here. You can see, of course, this one also supports the picture-in-picture, -picture, but that's just a gimmick, as the picture is actually going to show you up here. Let's just show that. You can see, whoops, let's uh, try that. And you can see that. And it's really not that useful, especially right now I'm filming towards me and you can see the camera is actually the front facing camera. So that's not going to be that useful. And finally, we can adjust some of the parameters. You can adjust contrast, brightness, scale, and the scale is actually important. It's not showing up by default. Actually, let me turn off the picture in picture first. And the scale is actually not turned on by default. So right now I turn it on, you can see we can see the range, not sure how well it shows up. 33 degrees Celsius, 36 degrees Celsius is the highest. 23 is the minimum, that's the temperature here. Now, you notice this is actually dynamic because right now I'm showing the light up there and you can see that it changes to 57. So it does dynamically adjust the image based on the temperature range. And of course, we can do mirroring and rotating and you get the idea. So the function here is definitely very useful and intuitive. 
And of course, we have the temperature range, as I mentioned earlier, you can select right now we're in the lower temperature range is from minus 20 to 150 degrees. Of course, you can select to 100 degrees to 600 degrees. It does take a few seconds for the camera to recalibrate. And once we recalibrate it, you can see the image quality dropped significantly, as of course, right now we're in this higher temperature range. That is to be expected. You know what, let's actually use this mode to measure the operating temperature of a Miniware MHP30 hot plate. And for that, I need to flip around the thermal camera here. And here is our Miniware MHP30 hot plate, which is operating at 350 degrees, which is the highest temperature it can get. So now let's take a look. So let me try to record so we can see this side by side here. And you can see the temperature we're measuring here is roughly 320 degrees which is a little bit off, but that's probably to be expected given that the surface emissivity, we don't necessarily know what it is, that it's just approximate. So right now, remember that number. Now we're going to use another thermal camera to validate that reading. So here is our Kaiweets. So you can see that the temperature reading we're measuring on this Kaiweets is at around 320 degrees, which is very similar to the temperature reading we got on the Thermal Master. And by the way, as I mentioned earlier, the Infisense P2, although it is physically identical to the Thermal Master, it does not support the higher temperature range. So let's actually verify that. So I'm going to use the same app. And it's initializing. So you can see the image quality is very similar to that on the Thermal Master. And you can see by default we're again in this minus 20 degrees to 150 degrees range. But if I try to drop down this drop down manual, you can see we don't have the other option. And I do think this is because this sensor is a few years old. If you look at the latest one, for example, the P2 from InfiRay, it also supports up to 600 degrees. If you recall, the Thermal Master P2 Pro has two different temperature ranges. One is for the high temperature measurement range, which is what we used to measure this 350 degrees Celsius hot plate. Now let's take a look at what happens when I change it back to the lower temperature measurement mode. So you can see here, we are right now at minus 20 to 150. And let's take a look. You can see we have some artifacts already. And it should, yep. It should enter this protection mode. So this mode is really to help you prevent damaging the thermal camera. And you can see that the interesting part is it does not automatically switch the range. It just tells you that the temperature is too high for the current setting. On some of the thermal cameras, this range change happens automatically. So let's take a look at it with the Kaiwitz KTI W02. You can see here we're in the normal range. And you actually can't see that, but right now, this is actually in the normal range. But if I move closer, you'll see the same artifacts. And then you hear the shutter clicking, and now you can see that it automatically changed to this higher temperature measurement range. And it does take a few seconds. And let's do that again. So you can see right now, we're exceeding the temperature range. And it froze for one second, and it changes to the higher range. Similarly, when we remove from the heat source, it took a second to change it back. So in my opinion, it would be great if the P2 Pro does this temperature range change automatically as well. But you can see probably the reason why is because it does take a few seconds. One, two, three, you can see that it takes three or four seconds to change the temperature range. So it's not as fast as it is on the Kiwi's KTI W02. Before we take a look at the supplied macro lens, I thought I would put a few captured images here for you to judge the thermal image quality. Anyway, one of the reasons you want to use the P2 Pro instead of the P2, it is because it's also supplied with this macro lens, which can be attached on conveniently magnetically. So let's take a look at how well it works. Here I have an Arduino board powered on for a while now, and 
here is what we can see through the thermal master. You can see we are able to see the ICs, but you are not able to get much more detail than this. That's because the stock lens is not designed for close-ups. So let's put on the macro lens here. Here is the supplied macro lens. You can see it is very easy to put on. All you do is just to align them and then magnetically it attaches. Anyway, so now we are attached. So let's take a closer look here. Not sure how well it shows up, and I'll take quite a few pictures here so you can see them on the video here. And definitely we are able to see a lot of details, and actually the quality is quite decent. So let me actually take a video of this so you can see what we're seeing through the thermal camera here. And of course, this is with the smoothing enabled. If I disable the smoothing, you can see the quality of the video dropped a little bit, but not by much. So I actually prefer having the smoothing on. So now I turn it back on. And here is a single board computer. We had to power it down for a while. Let's take a look here. And you can see how clearly we can see that inductor. Let's take a look at a few others. You can see this is actually the footprint of an IC that is heating up from the other side. And we have an IC here. And similarly, that's the IC on the other side. So you can see that we are able to capture a lot of detail on this thermal camera. With the macro lens, it is very useful for detecting any circuit fault on your circuit board. And I just flip it over. Let's remove the heatsink quickly and see what we can see here. And you can see these ICs heated up. Obviously, this should be under the heatsink, but right now I have heatsink removed. So you can see that they are pretty hot, but they are actually manageable, the temperature. Now, I have quite a few of these thermal cameras with macro lens. I might do a side-by-side -side comparison to see how well they stack up against one another, if there is enough interest. Please let me know if you'd like me to do a video on that in the comment section below. Also, because as I mentioned earlier, the thermal master uses infrared sensor, it will work with any application that supports infrared P2 or P2 Pro. So let's actually take a look here. So for example, let's use the P2 Pro application. And you will see that it works equally well. Let's try the infrared goal. And again, you can see that this application works equally well as well. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this review. If you liked the video, please remember to give it a big thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more videos like this in the future. Your participation makes videos like this possible. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.